Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. Good day. Again, welcome to our subject, Accounting Information System. And we are about to discuss Chapter 11, which is entitled Enterprise Resource Planning Systems or the ERP Systems. Okay, so nabanggit na rin itong ERP system na to in Chapter 1, although it was just being introduced to you. So, for today's discussion, okay, after this, now you will be able to okay, know about the functionality and the key elements of an ERP system. You will also know about the ERP configurations, the servers, the databases, and also the bolt-on softwares. You will also know about the data warehousing as a strategic tool and issues related to the design, maintenance, and operation of data warehouse, the risks associated with the implementation of ERP, the key considerations related to the ERP implementation, the internal control and auditing implications associated with the ERPs. And finally, uh, we will be talking about the leading ERP products and their distinguishing features. All right? So basically, organizations mix and match pre-coded software components to assemble an ERP system that, bet, that best meets their business requirements. But technically, before we proceed with uh, the ERP system, okay, let's try again to have a recap about the non-ERP systems, okay, which are yung mga flat file, yung database management that we have discussed in the previous chapters. <clears throat> so, one of the problems that we have encountered in the previous chapter is that there are in-house design which limits connectivity outside the company because technically, our systems might be only accessible inside the organization. Then, pagdating sa outside, wala na. No? Uh, Kung baga, restricted na yung access pag sa outside, i yeah, uh, e open okay there is also a tendency uh, towards separate information systems within the firm so meaning no merong possible na iba-ibang uh, type ng system yung ginagamit let's say may database sa isa mayro namang flat file din sa isa okay may relational so it lacks integration limits as to communication between the company because there are separate information systems Okay, the strategic decision making are not supported. Okay, because sometimes, di ba, uh, limited lang yung um, access or even limited lang din yung power ng information system, the databases, or even the flat file that we have discussed previously. Also, there is a long-term maintenance costs, which is high. Okay, and then it limits the ability to engage in process re-engineering. So, these were some of the problems that um, have been encountered on non-ERP systems. And let's try to address this uh, later um, when we talk about the ERP system. Okay? So, just a quick review about the traditional information uh, system model. Okay? Uh, in this case, we are having what we so-called closed database architecture. So, this particular architecture is similar in the concept of the flat file approach, okay, naalala nyo pa yung flat file approach, the data remains the property of the application or the data is owned one uh, of one of the user lang, tama ba? Okay, and also there is a fragmentation limit as to communication. Remember in the discussion of the flat file in the previous chapter, di ba, we cannot share the data because we only own the data. Ganun yung nangyayari sa flat file or even the, the traditional one. The existence of numerous distinct and independent databases. Diba? Nagkaroon nga ng data redundancy at saka may mga anomaly problems. Ano yung mga anomalies ulit natin? We have the deletion anomaly. We have the update anomaly. We have also the insert anomalies. Okay? Na na-encounter natin. And also, no, one of the concern is about paper-based. No? It requires multiple entry of data. Uh, diba? Yung mga previous chapters natin, it requires let's say, yung mga vouchers na pinanggagalingan, it needs to be properly signed, although kahit information system, there are somehow printing pa rin na nagaganap. And also, the status of information is unknown at some key points. So, that's how traditional 
information model on the previous chapter works. Okay, so again, this is just uh, an image which shows us the closed database architecture. So, ano bang sinasabi ng image na to? So, this traditional model uh, is uh, usually for manufacturing. Makikita nyo naman may manufacturing dito. So, this company employs a closed database architecture which is similar in the concept of a basic flat file model. So, under nitong approach ng closed database architecture na to, okay, a database management system is being used to provide minimal technological advantages over the flat file system. So, paano natin malalaman na ito po ay using the database uh, access management system? Okay, ito, di ba? Ito. Sorry. Ito, di ba? Mga databases ito. Alright? So, the database management system is more than a private but powerful file system. Alam natin yun. As with the flat file approach, the data remain as a property of the application. Thus, distinct, separate, and independent databases exist. Kaya meron tayong customer database dito, manufacturing database, as well as procurement database. So dito, sa example na to, when a customer places an order, the order begins with a paper-based journey around the company where it is keyed in the system uh, of several departments. Diba? So there is an order system. This redundant task cause delays and loss of order. Okay? Uh, ano ba yung mga department? We have the customers, the sales, the accounts receivable. Okay? Then, dahil na the transit of this information from various systems, now the status of the order may be at some point in time unknown. Okay? So, dito, um, pupunta yung query, di ba naalala ninyo sa revenue cycle at saka sa previous discussion natin about ordering, you know, mapupunta muna siya doon sa marketing department who will take a look kung meron bang, or even the customer department, take a look muna kung available ba yung uh, product na ino order and then sa kapalang lilipat sa shipping uh, sa sa sorry sa ordering tapos sa shipping then after that pupunta siya sa various steps pa so halos ang dami ng steps ang daming system na dadaanan if you are going to use this closed database architecture okay so it lacks communication between the system kasi nga ang dami nitong databases which is somehow na address na in the previous chapter but there are still some challenges. Kaya nga, no, to address these challenges, no, we have now yung tinatawag natin na ERP or the Enterprise Resource Planning System. So the ERP system supports a smooth and seamless flow of information across the organization by providing a standardized environment for a firm's business process and common operational databases that supports the application. Ano nga ba itong ERP na to? So, an enterprise resource planning system, or ERP muna, okay, are activities supported by multiple module application software. So, pagdating ng next, ano natin, next uh, week's discussion, no, about uh, yung online natin, discussion, I will be showing you an example of an ERP. So, you can see their modules, okay, because that's an ERP system, yun yung characteristic niya. Meron siyang various module in the application software that helps the company to manage the important tasks or parts of the business in an integrated fashion. So, integrated na dun sa isang system, lahat ng modules, okay, at hindi na natin kailangan ng various applications, okay. So, what are the key features of this uh, ERP system? So, technically, uh, as mentioned a while ago, meron tayong smooth and seamless flow of information across the organizational boundaries kasi, again, we do not need to maintain various databases. It's already inclusive in one application software, but it's multi-module. Then also, na-standardize na yung environment since there is a shared database, independent applications, and integrated 
application. So, so shared siya. Hindi siya necessarily na individual databases. Alright? So, this is now the illustration about the ERP system natin. So, mamaya, we will be discussing one by one, no? The various contents of this. But, uh, again, as you can see here, no? Everything will start with uh, the core application, which is an application that operationally supports the day-to-day -day activity of the business. Okay? So, if these applications fail, then most likely the business will also fail. So, ito yung ating course application functions. Okay? Ito yung mga fun core functions natin. Okay? And then, typical core applications but not limited to will include yung sales and distribution, some business planning, shop floor control, o kaya naman logistics, no? These are just some examples, okay? So, core applications are also known as the online transaction processing or the OLTP. Mamaya, we will be discussing that further again, okay? So, basically, mamaya din, i-discuss natin ano bang function itong OLAP na to related doon sa mga core functions natin and also the bolt-on software. Sir, bakit meron pa rin tayong data warehouse? Yes, later we will be discussing it. It is where we store the data on the enterprise resource planning system. And sir, bakit meron po tayong legacy system? Okay, uh, because of the fact that even though we are using the ERP, okay, at some point in time, we are going to migrate, okay, uh, sa practice, ang, ang tawag namin dun is migrate, so ibig sabihin from old system, going to the new system. Kasi ang nangyayari dyan, especially for the audit trails, no, hindi natin pwedeng uh, burahin na lang basta-basta yung legacy system, lalo na kung marami ng laman yun. Matatransfer natin yung data to the ERP, however, in some of the cases, okay, kailangan pa rin i-maintain yung legacy system. Okay, kasi nga, uh, because of some audit trail issues, lalo na in, in other countries, or even the Philippines, no, uh, some of the audit trails, especially for tax purposes, no, it needs long time bago mo burahin. Okay? So, ayan, we will dis be discussing them one by one mame Itong contents ng ating enterprise resource planning system. So, are you still okay, guys? Any question? Ayan. So, most of the organizations right now, lalo na pag magtatrabaho na kayo in the future, they are already using ERP system, lalo na yung malalaki. Although it is costly, no? the benefit of which is more than its cost. Okay? So, let's start discussing the components of that ERP system by discussing the two main ERP applications. So, we have the core applications, which is also known as mentioned to you a while ago, the online uh, transaction processing or the OLTP, okay, which is uh, used for the transaction processing system. So, naalala yung transaction processing natin in the chapter 2's discussion. Diba? It talks about the business operations. It supports the day-to-day -day operational activities of the business. Okay, and also it supports some of the critical tasks such as some simple queries about the operational database. Kaya kanina, nakita ninyo sa babang portion ng image that there is an operational database kasi connected doon yung core application. Okay? So, it also includes yung nabanggit kanina na various parts which are the sales, distribution, business planning, production planning, shop floor control, lalo na sa manufacturing yan, then logistic modules. Okay? So, depende sa type ng entity, di ba? Kung manufacturing ka, possible na ito yung mga makita natin. Pero if it's a merchandising, no, large merchandising, then baka mawala yung, let's say, production planning and uh, some sort of logistics, no? So, it depends upon the type of the business. So, that's the first um main ERP application, yung core application, which is uh, handling the transaction processing system of our ERP application. Now, the next okay, ERP application okay, is yung business analytics application naman. Okay. So, ano bang purpose nitong business analytics application? 
So this is also known as the OLAP, yung kanina nasa taas na part, the Online Analytical Processing, okay? which is a decision support tool that is used for management decision making, okay? specifically for complex data. Okay, so it somehow parang ano na siya, no? related siya sa management reporting system natin, itong uh, business analytics application. Samantalang yung core application kanina, it's more on the financial reporting system. Okay, so it's also um, supplies the management will, with a real-time information and it permits, of course, okay, improve performance as to decision-making. Kasi timely, real-time yung ating um, information. Now, it also includes yung mga na-discuss natin na mga modeling, mga ad hoc reporting, and what is analysis. Okay? So, it's more on uh, the management's um, tool, no? Itong business analysis na. Tapos, ibig sabihin pala, in one ERP system, it already includes both of the uh, systems na pang financial at saka pang management reporting system. So, we do not need a separate tool for that. Kasi last time in our previous discussions, we somehow have discussed pwede maging isa siya, pwede maging separate kasi depending upon the applications used by the business. So, dito sa ERP natin, it could serve as one um, general application or software that could give us both of the reporting systems. Okay? Any questions so far? Wala naman. Ayan. So, focus tayo dun sa OLAP. Online. Ano nga ulit yung OLAP kanina, guys? Hindi to si OLAP, ha? The Online Analytical Processing. Okay? So, again, it supports the management's critical tasks in analysis of complex data. So, it includes yung consolidation na tinatawag natin, which is an aggregation or roll-up of data. Pag sinabing consolidation, sometimes kasi uh, there are cases, no? Um, based on my experience, based... Uh, on some other entities, no, they may have various ERP systems there. So, kahit meron tayong sabi kanina sa definition na one application, one uh, software would include already multi-module. So, in some businesses, they still need various platform. So, through the use of this OLAP, no, meron tayong consolidation. By the way, isa sa process na ipapakita ko sa inyo by next week's discussion, yung experience ko about this OLAP uh, consolidation. Okay? So, ayun. It aggregates and roll up. Parang uh, wala pa kayong consolidation, no? Nasa business com kasi yun, eh. Though, um, one of the processes in the accounting that you will uh, study in the future, such as yung elimination, consolidation of financial statement, it could be done under this OLAP system. Okay, pwede rin magkaroon ng drill down. It allows the users to see the data in selected increasing level of details. Pag sinabing drill down, let's say for example, no, nasa financial statements or nasa report, um, cash, 100,000. Okay, so through the use of drill down, you could be able to check, okay, saan nang galing 100,000? What are the line items that includes uh, or consists that 100,000. So, yun yung drill down. No? Kaya niyang tignan from the top level, which is summarized, up to the smallest detail, which consists that summarized data. And also, we have uh, one functionality here na slicing and dicing, which enables the users to examine the data from different viewpoints, okay, often performed along the time axis and depict trends and patterns. So, usually, it's more on the graphical representation of our data. Specifically, di ba, sa management natin, uh, management tasks, di ba, they would rather see a graph, an image, okay, a chart rather than words description. Okay? So, that's OLAP. Okay. So, in our ERP, so, we have also what is so-called server configuration. So, most of the ERP systems are based doon sa tinatawag natin na client-server model, okay, which we will uh, try to discuss also in Chapter 12. But we will try to introduce it here, no? wherein the client-server model is a form of a network topology, okay, arrangement, ibig sabihin nun, which the user's computer, o kaya naman yung uh, terminal, okay, accesses the ERP programs and the data via the host computer which is known as a server, 
So the server may be centralized, but the clients are usually located at multiple locations throughout the enterprise. So parang ano lang yan. Let's say for example, uh, example ko na lang sa Accenture. We have our, let's say, main server nasa Mandaluyong. Okay, I'm working previously in uh, Cubao. No, Accenture Cubao, dun sa malapit sa gateway. There are also Accentures located in Taguig and also in Makati. So, we could be able, kahit nasa various locations kami, na ma-access yung main server na nandoon sa, what? Nasa Mandaluyong. Okay? Parang PUPSIS dan. So, let's uh, try to put that topology or arrangement sa PUP. Diba? Kayo, you can access the main servers even Uh, yung PUP server natin, even nasa labas kayo ng PUP, no? But, uh, some cases, merong mga restricted access lang that it could be accessible only on PUP. So, that's how the client server works, no? Ganun din sa ERP system natin. Okay, so, um, there are two basic architectures that we're about to discuss in this uh, next slide. Okay, we have yung two-tier model at saka we have also the three-tier model. Okay? So, unahin natin yung two-tier model. So, this is the uh, model which the server handles both the databases at saka application duties. So, computers used by clients are responsible for presenting data to the users and passing user input back to the server. So, some of the ERP Sellers natin use this approach for a local area network application for which they demand on server is restricted to relatively small population of users. So, ayan, kapag two-tier tayo, again, um, it is handling both the application at saka yung database duty. Ibig sabihin, one, one function na siya doon sa isang system. Okay, may application na siya at saka it also maintains a database and it also uses now yung LAN natin, local area network. So, to show you the two-tier, okay, ito siya, kaya siya two-tier, no? Una, of course, we have uh, this first tier, okay, let me just change it, okay, so ito yung two-tier, di ba? Um, so, we have the first tier, first level, okay, these are the user presentation layer, which is yung mga terminal natin, yung mga computers natin, which is usually, di ba, mga computers natin, uh, babe, uh, may, maybe parang isipin nyo na lang nasa ano kayo, nasa computer shop, pero um, ipupunta ko siya mamaya sa concept ng business. So, sa computer shop, we have various computers, okay? So, which is connected by a local area network. Tapos, isipin nyo yung pinaka main server nung mga various computers sa sa computer shop ay nandoon dun sa may-ari o kaya yun sa nagbabantay. That's the main server. Which, it could access all of the computers kasi it has the application at saka it has also the database. Okay? So, putting it in the context of the business ERP system, okay? So, sa isang location kasi, no, we have various computers. So, let's say si Accountant 1, okay? Meron din si Processor 1, Processor 2, Processor 3, Processor 4. So, meron mga various computers sila. Even laptops in some cases. No? So, that's the user presentation layer. That's the first tier. Ngayon, lahat sila, once connected by a local area network, no? or even some Wi-Fi per se, okay? they can be connected in the server. And then, uh, in that particular server, it already contains yung application natin. So, pwedeng i-access nung lahat, nung kung sino man nandun sa first tier, yung server which contains the applications at saka yung database natin. Okay? Are we clear on that? Alright. So, that's the two-tier client server of the ERP system. Okay? But in some cases, okay, so there are Okay, entities, or most of them are using itong three-tier, no? which is the, the database and also the application functions are being separated. Kanina sa two-tier, one server, both application and um, database, okay, is already contained there. Ngayon, separate yung ating application server at the same time, the database server. 
So, it is naman usually used for a larger ERP system. Yung two-tier kanina, it's somehow more on a small scale pa. No? Sa pa, samantalang ang three-tier is uh, for a large larger um, ERP system, which uses yung one. Kanina LAN, di ba? Local area network. Ngayon naman, one. Which is wide area network kasi it contains large ERP systems okay, for connectivity among the users. So, satisfying the client requests requires two or more network connections. Initially, the client establishes uh, communications within the application okay, software or even the server. Ngayon, do you have idea ba anong pinagkaiba ng LAN at saka ng WAN? Okay. So, again, pag LAN kanina, it's a group of a computer and network devices which are connected usually within the same building. Okay? Pwedeng ganun yung concept ng LAN. Okay? Same building kasi small uh, scale lang siya. But when we talk about one, it's a comparison, no? Which is not restricted to geographical location although it could be compound in a particular state o kaya country. So usually, pwedeng itong one na to is for a larger scale. Kanina nabanggit ko sa inyo that uh, in some cases, di ba, um, let's say, yung server, it could be accessible in in um, Mandaluyong, okay, nasa Kubawa ko. So, yun, na, magkakaiba ng building, di ba? So, we could use the one, okay, the wide area network. Okay, are we clear on that? Ngayon, I will be showing you bakit siya naging 3-tier. Okay. Kanina 2-tier, we have the first tier, which are the computer, and then second tier, the server, which contain the database and application. Ngayon, in the three tier, okay, so for the first tier, andun ulit yung mga computer natin, the user presentation layer, which are the computers or the terminals that we are using. Ito. Okay? Then, the second tier now is the application server. So, nakaseparate kasi yung application server sa database, so meron kang application server. Okay? So, then, after the application server, it could have also the database server. Okay? So, yun lang yung pagkakaiba nila. So, what's the advantage of using a 2-tier and 3-tier? Of course, kanina nabanggit na natin yung one of the reasons. It's because of the fact that when we talk about 2-tier, usually it's for only small-scale uh, ERP systems. So, meaning, it's somehow related to one system being used in a same building, same location, but in a three-tier, we need it for most of the time because we have a wide range of uh, demographics. Okay? So, ayan. Even though, magkaiba ng, makikita ninyo, magkaiba ng tier yung client server natin, they have the same items. Tama ba? The application at saka yung database natin. But uh, on the three-tier, magkahiwalay nga lang yung mga servers natin compared with the two-tier na iisa lang yung server natin. Okay? Um, one also of uh, the advantage of three tier is that pag nasira, let's say lang, no, wag naman sana, the application server nasira, at least your database which contains some of your data or most of your data okay, will be separate. At least hindi siya masisira. Compared with the other one na pag nasira yung ERP, minsan kasi nangyari yun, eh, biglang sumasabog, na technically sumasabog na, na literal na sabog, but the data could be hacked o kaya naman nagkaroon ng virus, di ba, nasisira, sumasabog yung data, then um, most of your data in the two-tier would be all affected kasi nandun na yung both the application and the database server. Okay? Are we clear on that? Alright. Thank you very much. So, na nagising pa kayo, no? Okay? Ikot-ikot muna tayo. Okay? Exercise. Okay? Lakad-lakad. Tingin sa malayo, mga 20 seconds. Okay? O kaya pumikit ka. Pagising mo, wala na siya. Oh, <laughs> joke lang. Okay? Wala ka naman talagang inaabangan. Anyways, okay na tayo. Okay? So, let's proceed. So, basically, um, we are about to distinguish right now ano yung pinagkaiba ng OLTP, which is the Online uh, Transaction Processing, at saka yung OLAP, the Online, um, ano kayo, OLAP natin kanina, the online analytical processing natin. Okay? Ano yung typical na pagkakaiba nilang dalawa in uh, the client-server context? Okay? So, here in this uh, image, we are showing the 
uh, three tier. Okay? So, when implementing an ERP system which includes a data warehouse, a clear distinction needs to be made between the two competing data processing which is the OLAP and OLTP. So, the OLAP uh, sorry, the OLTP events, the online transaction processing events, consist large numbers of relatively simple transactions such as i-update mo yung accounting record o kaya naman i-store mo yung uh, related natin ng mga tables. Now, for example, sa ordering system natin, pag nag tayo ng data relating to a specific customer, then we could be able to get it. Tama ba? Okay, so in the transaction processing activity, it involves yung updating natin of our accounting record. Now, uh, the relationship between the records in such online transaction processing o OLTP, okay, would take only few records in actual retrieval under a single transaction. Okay, so dito, mapapansin mo, naka-separate yung servers ng OLTP Okay, the operations database as well. Okay, kasi we are talking about transactions, diba? So, it's more on operations. So, kaya nandito sa two tier or second tier yung OLTP server natin, the processing application software or application system. Tapos nandito naman yung database natin, which is the operation database. Samantalang, sa OLAP, we have a separate application server. Okay, yung OLAP natin. And then, we have also the data warehouse which contains our um, database on the uh, online ano nga ulit? Ano yung OLAP? Online Analytical Processing. Okay? So, ayan. Uh, pinupunto lang na magkahiwalay sila. Hindi porket nabanggit kanina sa, sa, sa previous slides na ay application Kung magkaiwalay, uh, kung, kung magkaiba silang application, then it should have, I mean, magkaiba kasi sila. Di ba yung nabanggit kanina sa OLTP, it's more on transactions. Samantala yung OLAP, it's more on the business analytics. Okay? So, ayan. I hope na naintindihan niyo yung discussion natin, ha? Okay. So, let's now discuss yung iba pang content ng ating ERP system kanina, which are the databases at saka yung bolt-on. Nabanggit kanina yung bolt-on, di ba? So, let's try to discuss this already. Okay. So, let's talk about the database configuration. Okay. So, ano ba tong database configuration natin? So, ERP systems are composed of thousands of database tables. So, each table is associated with business processes that are coded sa ating system. Now, the ERP implementation team, which includes yung mga users at saka yung IT, okay, uh, selects the specific database tables and processes them by setting switches in the system. So, sa database configuration, nagsiset yung user at saka yung IT, no? ng switch in the system okay switching in the system in this we determine how all the switches needs to be set for a given configuration which requires a deep understanding of the existing process so choosing table settings involve decision to re-engineer and to make use of the business practices so in other words etong database configuration na to the company typically changes its process to accommodate the ERP rather than modifying the ERP to accommodate the system. So, yun yung database configuration natin. Putting switches in the system. Okay. Ngayon, we have also yung tinatawag natin na bolt-on softwares. So, uh, yung database configuration, it's somehow internal kasi nga, uh, it only requires the key users natin, internal user, yung mga gumagamit talaga ng system at saka yung IT. Ngayon, kapag nagkaroon tayo ng configuration using bolt-on software, it is a third-party vendor which provides specialized functionality software. So, instead of employing internal, okay, gagamitin mo yung tao mo at saka yung IT, okay, so you are going to purchase another software, okay? 
So under the bolt-on software, which is most organizations have found it along that could drive, cannot drive all of the processes in the company. Okay, so the decision to use the bolt-on software requires um, some sort of careful consideration kasi bibili ka dyan, gagastos ka dyan, additional. So most of the leading ERP um, sellers have already entered into a partnership agreement with a third party. So meaning kung ikaw yung uh, makakabili ng high-end na, mamaya may, we will be talking about some high-end um, ERP systems. Okay, so it may already include bolt-on softwares para hindi ka na gumawa ng database configurations mo. Okay? So, it's least likely na maging risky itong um, choice of bolt-on because they are already being endorsed ng ERP system. Kung baga, compatible na siya compared with um, pabaguhin mo pa may ERP system tapos babaguhin mo database configuration by uh, switches. So, major risky. So, usually, the bolt-on software are used for um, supply chain management. Okay? Uh, which links yung mga vendors, yung mga carriers, at saka third-party logistic company and information providers natin. Okay? So, familiar naman kayo sa supply chain management system or supply chain management software. Okay? So, it's more on the set of activities associated with moving of goods and raw material stages to customers. Okay? So, yan yung um, ERP configuration. But don't worry guys, um, this configuration is not actually kapag kayo ay nagtrabaho na, not your concern. If ever lang na um, the entity will be using the database configuration, then um, most likely no, they will need your help if uh, so that they could configure based on your usage in that ERP system. Pero, sinasabi ko na sa inyo, most of the time, bolt on software, inclusive na siya dun sa package ng ERP system para hindi na tayo maghahirapan sa configuration. Okay? Ayan. So, one also of the mentioned word kanina or terminology is a database warehouse. Okay. Ano kaya tong database warehouse na to? So, it is a relational or a multi-dimensional database that may consume hundreds of gigabytes or even terabytes of this storage. So it's more on a data warehouse is a storage. Okay? So storage ho yan. Now the data is normally extracted periodically for operational databases. Okay? Or from a public information service. Okay, so, kung baga doon natin ini-store yung mga data ng ERP system natin. Now, a database constructed for quick searching, retrieval, or ad hoc queries, and ease of use, yun yung gamit ng database warehouse. Halimbawa, okay, kailangan ko ng ganitong report, no? Not only management report, let's say, kailangan ko ng report about the fixed asset system. So, I, uh, fixed asset, no? So, I will just search, search fixed asset, property, plant, and equipment. Okay, wala. Ito yung list ng kailangan ko. That's uh, coming from the data warehouse. Okay, kasi doon na si save lahat ng mga information that the ERP system has. So, the ERP system could exist without having a data warehouse, no? However, it's that the organizations that are serious about competitive advantage deploying both. The recommended data architecture for an ERP implementation includes a separate operational and data warehouses. So, kanina, naalala ninyo, in the three-tier ERP system natin, okay, yung image ng may OLAP at saka OLTP, di ba magkahiwalay yung operational database at saka yung ating data warehouse. So typically we employ data warehouse but sabi dito no it could not uh, it could also exist the ERP system could exist without the data warehouse. Eh, sir, sana mag store no? Most probably instead of storing it in a data warehouse it could um now be saved doon sa operational database. Ngayon kasi pag nangyari yon baka naman no, ma-overload yung operational database natin kung doon pa natin i-store lahat ng uh, processing ng OLAP the online uh, analytic, uh, analytics processing or analytical processing. Okay. So, these are the five stages of data warehousing 
So, mamay isa-isahin natin yan. So, we have the modeling, okay, modeling data for the data warehouse. We are extracting the data for operational databases, cleansing extracted data, transforming the data into a warehouse model, at saka loading the data into the wa data warehouse. So, isa-isahin natin yan. So, we have, okay, stage one, or process number one, we have modeling the data for the data warehouse. So, in chapter 9 at saka chapter 10, um, we have discussed about the importance of data normalization, di ba, naalala nyo yun, which is um, used to eliminate the anomalies, which are yung update, insertion, or even deletion. Normalizing the data in the operational database is necessary to reflect accurate and dynamic interaction among entities. Naalala nyo entities, di ba? Okay, data attributes are constantly updated, bagong attributes are added, o kaya naman yung mga obsolete na data natin will be deleted. So, even though normalized, database will yield the flexible model needed for supporting multi-users in a dynamic operational environment. So, through the use of uh, data warehouses in modeling the data, okay, uh, it is used for va uh, vast size or large size of um, data warehouses wherein we need to normalize uh, the data warehouse that the warehouse databases consists of the normalized data okay na kailangan inormalize diba because the relational theory does not apply to data warehousing so whenever possible normalize tables pertaining to selected events that may be consolidated into denormalized tables. So, usually, it will be denormalized, uh, including the denormalized data. Okay? Yun yung pagmamodel natin ng uh, data natin. Okay. So, after mo na ma-model yung data for the data warehouse, you are about to extract yung data from the operational database. Remember, separate ang operational database sa data warehouse natin. So, by doing that, okay, you're about to collect the data from the operational databases, yung mga flat files mo, yung mga archives, at saka external data sources mo. Okay? And in that case, uh, in extracting the data, okay, the operational databases typically need to be out of service when extraction occurs to avoid data inconstancy. So, ibig sabihin, pag nag extract ka ng data sa operational database, dapat hindi pwedeng um, hindi pwedeng nag, di ba, uh, online transaction processing. So, um, oh, may nag input pa doon sa database mo ng online transaction. Then, hindi pwede mag-extract ng data once live yun. So, ang gagawin, stop mo na, okay, o kaya naman, gagawin yung extraction kapag wala nang gumagalaw ng operational database natin. Okay? Then after that, no, you are about to cleanse the extracted data. So when we talk about cleansing of the uh, extracted data, it involves filtering out or repairing naman yung invalid data prior to be stored in the data warehouse. Kasi baka yung uh, data natin is dirty. Kaya hindi na may ibig sabihin na marumi talaga na hawakan. Hindi. No? When we talk about dirty, it means baka may mga errors, di ba? may mga... Um, clerical or data entry errors, misspelled, kailangan ayusin natin yun kasi we are about to save it in another database already. Kailangan maayos na so that once the data in that data warehouse will be used, at least we will not have already any problem. But we are um, kumbaga, thinking na konti lang yung iaayos natin kasi kapag nagawa mo naman yung uh, trabaho mo or nagawa yung trabaho na maayos dun sa um, transaction processing, then we will not have any data na considered as dirty. Okay, kasi maayos. Okay, it, this cleansing of data also involves transforming the data into standard business terms with standard data value. Kasi nga, it will be used for management critical decision making, kaya it should uh, be standardized. Hindi pwede high faluting o kaya naman, uh, di ba? It should always be understandable. So, after cleansing, you're about to transform the data into the warehouse model. So, in transforming the data, okay, you are about to improve the efficiency, okay, which is summarize views before they are loaded. 
Kasi di ba, when we talk about um, the data warehouse under the online uh, analytical process natin, it's more on the management, tama ba, that would use it. Reporting na kasi, di ba, management critical system. So, they are about to use the summaries na lang. Although, kahit summary view yan, naalala nyo kanina in the previous slide that we are about to have drilling. So, kaya pa rin na uh, i-contain uh, from summary, pwede pa rin niya makita yung detail kung gusto niyang tignan. So, unlike the operational views, which are virtually in nature with underlying base tables, the database warehouse views are physical tables. So, however, in OLAP, now, it permits the users to construct virtual views from detailed data when one does not already exist. So, yan yung sinasabi ko kanina sa inyo that uh, it could be drilled down. Pwede pa rin makita yung details of data. Okay? And finally, now we are about to load the data into the data warehouses. Okay? So, the data warehouses must be created and maintained separately from operational so that there is an internal efficiency, integration of the legacy system, at saka consolidation of a global data. Okay? So yung naklens na, naayos na, na data, okay? Naklens na, tapos na transform na, it could be now stored in the database. Okay? So, any questions so far? Na naman. Okay? So this is the database warehouse uh, system natin na kanina nabanggit naman na, di ba? Okay, so we have the ERP system which contains the operational database or the operations database. It will undergo data cleansing. Tapos sa data warehouse, di ba? We could have here summarized version. Tapos meron tayong detailed kung kailangan mo ng detailed and it will be archived, di ba? It will be saved there as time goes by. Okay? So, any question? So, kasama rin yung legacy system ha, yung separate system natin or platform kung sakari meron ka separate or old system. Okay? So, any questions so far? Okay, wala naman ho. Okay, now let's talk about yung tinatawag natin na data mining. Okay, any question? Saglit mo na ha. Okay, so dahil kanina in the previous slides we have talked about data warehouse kung saan ni store lahat ng data. Okay, we could now have what is so called data mining. So ano ba yung data mining natin? So in simple words, a data mining is uh, a process kung saan we are about to use uh, a particular data and we need to extract it from a larger set of data. So meaning, kung halimbawa kailangan mo na ng data mula doon sa data warehouse, you will now have data mining, di ba? To get what you need in that particular. Kasi hindi mo naman pwedeng gamitin lahat, di ba? Kung halimbawa, kailangan mo lang ng um, related information about the sales of the entity. Eh, yung data warehouse mo, kasama doon yung sales, yung purchases, the fixed asset, the cash receipts, and other um, information. Okay, so kailangan mo lang i-modify siya from a larger view going to a smaller view. So that's the use of data mining. Ngayon, um, there are some applications uh, of data mining in various business fields. So ito yung mga nakalagay dito. So let's say, for example, sa banking, no, the, uh, the data mining okay, uh, application is used to detect patterns or fraudulent a credit card usage, okay, sa marketing naman, identifying buy, uh, buying pattern. So, it's more on critical decisions na kasi. Sir, um, wala bang data mining dun sa application software natin? Pwede rin na magkaroon ng data mining yun kasi the application software para doon sa OLTP or the online transaction processing also saves various amount of data which you can get uh, small uh, information lang or one data lang through the use of data mining. So, may mga certain application software about data mining na pwedeng kasama na rin doon sa um, ating ERP system. Okay? Ayan. So, now, let's move on to another topic. No? Ano yung lists? Kasi in the previous discussions ng flat file, ng database, relational, 
Tama ba? So, RIA, model. Okay, there are also risks associated in implementing them. Now, let's talk about ano yung risks na implem uh, in implementing the ERP system natin. Okay? So, one of which is yung phase of implementation. So, typically, di ba, mula sa mga old systems, or meaning yung mga previous chapter na systems natin na nag-discuss mula sa database, flat file, you're going to switch it to ERP. One of the um, problem there, itong big bang na tinatawag dito, is that um, nagkakaroon kasi ng, kumbaga, una, sh shock yung mga, lalong-lalo na sa mga empleyado, ay, gagamit na naman ako ng panibagong system, aaralin ko na ulit. There is a resistance. Okay, lalo na kung um, magpapalit ka talaga. Kaya nga, most of the time, pag nagsisimula ng business and they will be using ERP system, dapat kung ano ERP system na meron ka, then, ituloy-tuloy mo na. However, in some of the cases, uh, as per my experience, no, kasi lahat ng companies na pagtrabawan ko, after, let's say, 5 years nila, pang 5th year na nila ng usage of software, nakakita sila na mas maganda software, then they will be able to buy that new one. So, yung migration from the old system going to the new, medyo challenging. Kaya yun, ito yung phase of implementation. Dapat, magkaroon tayo ng uh, integration, hinay-hinay lang, okay? So, there would be trainings, of course, dapat, okay? Tapos, meron din na, um, let's say, for example, dapat, many times, specific times, it's usually done, let's say, within six months para ma-migrate lahat so that ma-familiarize pa ng mga tao. Hindi pa din, okay, bukas palit na tayo. Hindi pa din. Okay, kasi uh, may hirapan yung tao mo when she have implemented it. And also, in some cases, pag minadali mo yung transition from the uh, old system or the legacy system going to the ERP system, baka mamaya yung data mo na nakukunin sa legacy, di ba kanina there are data that will come from the legacy going to the ERP system, baka mamaya maging dirty sila, magkaroon ng error in transferring, then hindi mo matransfer lahat ng data na kailangan mo na maitransfer. Okay? So, dapat you manage the phase, the phase of the implementation. Also, ayun nga, uh, there would be some oppositions kasi ay sanay na ako dito eh di ba reluctant na ako eh sanay na sanay na ako dito tapos magpapalit pa tayo no? No? typical na mga sinasabi namin but eventually um, employee needs motivation at the same time kailangan din nila matrain so that they would be able to have a larger view of information okay, okay. another risk involved is Okay, so choosing our wrong software. So yes, there are possibilities that we could be able to buy an incorrect software kasi baka hindi siya fit doon sa business processing natin. Okay, kaya once you're going to buy an ERP, you need to ensure na yung ERP na yon is talagang suitable for your business processing. Although, alam naman natin, no, uh, based on my experience then na Kapag ikaw ay bibili, usually the ERP system will be the one to adjust. No? So, limbawa, bago mo siya binili, eh, kailangan ko ng ganito. Kaya kailangan ng, ng ganito. Okay. So, listahan. Ano yung kailangan mo? They will be the one who will be adjusting already. So, uh, so ngayon, sa mga panahon ngayon, uh, choosing the wrong software is uh, a minimal uh, risk na lang uh, based on my experience kasi we are about to ano, to um, use the adjusted already na ERP system. Uh, unless, kakasimula mo pala ng business, tapos, ayun, uh, wala ka pang established na business process, tapos gagamit ka ng ERP, so dun tayo magkakaproblema. Okay, so, again, uh, you need to choose the appropriate ERP system for your business process. Okay? Uh, and also, you are going to choose a wrong consultant. Ayan. Lalo-lalo na kung third party. Okay? Siyempre, uh, sad to say, pero minsan, they're just doing their job na hindi yung talagang efficient. Okay, taposin ko lang to. Okay, mababayaran ako din tapos na. Okay? So, the consultant should be what? Be motivated. Kailangan mong tignan kung ano talaga yung... Um, skills ng consultant mo kasi sila yung magda-drive lalo na sa pagbili ng uh, ERP 
bago ka pa lang bumili, mag- manghihingi ka na ng consultant. O kaya naman mag-hire ka na ng consultant, 'di ba? So, 'yun, kung kung mali na 'yung nasabi ng consultant mo especially sa pag-buy ng ERP system, then lahat na 'yan ng risk na nabanggit kanina, ma-encounter mo na. Okay? So, ayun, thorough thorough ano, thorough uh, interview o kaya naman uh tawag dito, uh, interview o kaya naman skill set um checking para doon sa magiging consultant mo. Okay? So usually mga ano na to, yung mga tinatawag namin na mga tenured na doon sa business uh, and even consultants, tenured consultants na yung mga kinukuha para sa mga ganitong uh, works lalong-lalo na sa ERP system. A consultant may be an accountant, it could be an IT, it could be a businessman, okay? So ikaw, malay mo, ikaw maging business consultant ka rin, okay? An ERP consultant. Okay? So, another pa is high cost. Ayan, medyo costly siya kasi bibili ng system, magme-maintenance ka, kailangan natin ng training, testing and uh, integration, at saka mga database conversion natin, lalo na from old to new. Even though, nabanggit ko naman sa inyo, it could compensate naman in a long run yung ating uh, cost, no? yung benefit. Kung baga, magiging beneficial pa rin siya as time goes by. Okay, and also, there could be possible disruptions in operations, lalo na kapag nagkaroon ng re-engineering, okay, if we want to re-engineer our ERP system, or even our system per se. Okay, so now, we, we talk about the internal controls about this ERP system. Of course, last time, um, na-encounter na rin natin yung mga internal controls ng various systems natin, so let's talk about the ERP systems and implication to internal control. So for transaction authorization, the controls are needed to validate transactions before they are being accepted by the modules. So para magbigyan kayo ng example dyan, uh, meron, uh, let's say for example, bago kami mag-post ng ganitong amount, okay, kailangan mo muna siyang, um, kailangan mo na siyang i-approve ng certain people inside din doon sa ERP system. So, meron pa rin authorization so that ma-validate yung transaction before it will be going to the system up to the warehouse or even the application databases. And also, the ERP are more dependent on program controls than human intervention. So, pwede nakaset na sa system kung ano yung approval na kailangan pag ganito and then kapag lumampas na lang sa kanilang magkakaroon ng human intervention. Okay, another would be segregation of duties. So the manual processes which require segregation of duties are being eliminated because again, since this is computerized, uh, most of the time, no, the system already works on it. But again, you need to ensure na yung system natin works properly so that hindi tayo magkaroon ng problem dyan. Okay, that's the compensating control. Okay, user role natin, you need to um, have the rules as to who will access, of course, the certain data. Okay, yun yung kailangan sa segregation of duties. Then, we have also the supervision. So, it requires technical and operational understanding of the new system. Kasi you cannot be able to supervise no, the system without knowing the system. Isipin mo na lang, mas matalino pa yung employee mo kaysa sa'yo nagsusupervise doon sa system. Okay, and also, employee-empowered philosophy should not be eliminated. Uh, should not eliminate supervision. Kasi usually nga, uh, lalong-lalo na ang may alam dun sa system, yung employee, then even though ganun yung case, kailangan mag-aral pa rin ng supervisor. Okay? Then accounting records, ayan, isang problem dito would be corrupted data may pass from external sources and from the legacy system, yung corrupt data. So dahil yung audit trail natin, kaya importante kanina na nabanggit ko sa inyo, one of the problem is from the old system going to the ERP, kailangan maingat yung pagta-transfer. The phase of the implementation should keep hinay-hinay lang so that uh, the data will not be corrupted. Kasi once na-corrupted na yung data, then mahirap na natin siyang magamit in the system. Or even, baka mamaya, we will have an incorrect output pa. Okay? So also, um, it lost already paper trail kasi system na. Okay. Again, also in this audit trail, uh, we would have yung backup system. Of course, yung mga data warehouse natin at saka yung 
application databases natin, they will have also their backups. Okay? Access control. So, critical concern about the confidentiality of information. Sino lang yung dapat na may access? Of course, sa me and the private before sa ERP system, may individual kami password. No? Um, password at saka username. Actually, sa isang company, meron pa kami ng token namin na tinatawag. Uh, this is a US uh, based token na kung saan, para siyang ano, para siyang maliit na beeper. Tapos doon, naglalabas siya ng code. Okay? Random codes na ini-input pa namin sa system bago namin mapasok. Okay? Because uh, if you will not have the code, o oh, nga, may password ka, may username ka, pag hindi mo in-encode yung um, numbers na lalabas dun sa token na tinatawag namin, then we could not be able to access the information. Okay? And also, uh, access on the database warehouse or the data warehouse kasi uh, you are often to share it with the suppliers and the customers kasi it's more on the decision making, di ba? So, make sure lang that confidential data will be um, taken in properly and we need to account them for using our Data Privacy Act. Okay? Okay, may contingency planning. Ito, importante ito sa ERP. Okay. So, sa contingency planning, halimbawa kasi, okay, sample ko na sa inyo based on my uh, our practice. Okay, so halimbawa, dati, nagtatrabaho ko sa Accenture, Cubao. Nandun yung ERP. Okay, ngayon, what if, okay, let's say for example, si Accenture, Cubao, hindi niya kayang uh, mag-accommodate nung employees kasi let's say, bumagsak yung ano, bumagsak yung building, huwag naman sana, no? Nasira. O kaya bumaha, hindi makapasok sa loob ng office para mag-process ng information. So, the contingency plan is being implemented and planned by the business. Okay? Ito yung tinatawag namin na business continuity planning and BCP. That's one of my work before. So, let's say, balik ako dun sa kwento ko na Accenture ko baw, nagsara, nasira, Okay, dapat may backup site ka. Okay, so ang backup site namin eventually dati is kay Mandaluyong. Uh, kung alam niyo yung nasa likod, Accenture, doon sa likod ng Robinson's uh, forum, okay, doon yung backup site namin. Meron lang isang room that can accommodate selected people, let's say tagi isa kada team, so that they could be able to still process the information without okay, a delay in our process. So ganun yun guys palagi, may backup. Okay, hindi pwedeng wala. Kasi, also, um, sir, paano kung buong Manila yung bumagsak? We have also a backup sa Cebu. Okay? So, sa Cebu. Eh, sir, paano yan kung bumagsak ang buong Pilipinas, hindi kaya makapag-access? So, ang backup naman namin before was in Bangalore, in India. Eh, sir, paano kung wala si India? Okay, meron pa kami kay Krakow. Okay? Sir, paano kung wala yung Krakow? So, there is a, a rolling, no? contingency plan. So, planado planado talaga. What if may mangyaring ganito? So that you could be able to avoid, no? Any problem to our clients. Okay, importante importante 'yan. And also, we have independent verification wherein the traditional verifications are already meaningless. So, they need to shift into an independent verification using the computerized system. Kaya nga mapapag-aralan nyo in the future yung auditing in the computerized information system so that you will know how to verify the information in a computerized environment. Are we clear on that, guys? Alright? So, here are some of the ERP products no, that I have already used and I can show you in the future na next week. Um, SAP Ito yung nasa libro, SAP, the largest ERP vendor, which uh, modules can be integrated into uh, a particular SCM, yung supply chain management, B2B, business to business, e-commerce, o kaya naman yung uh, markup language natin. Okay? XML. Okay? So, ito, nagamit ko to sa Accenture. Even in Reed Elsevier, may, may former company, okay? So, maganda. Ito yung pinakamaganda sa lahat ng mga nagamit ko. Ito yung pinakamaganda. Kasi modular siya. Although, ang, ang ano ko lang dito is that it's it's an application software. 
Okay? So, nasa, dati, ewan ko kung, kung nag-migrate na sila sa cloud computing, pero dati kasi kailangan naka-install yung SAP sa inyong laptop or computer para magamit mo siya. Yung iba kasi, naka- uh, online na, let's say, I'm just putting in the website, tapos kaya ko na siyang i-access. Okay? Also, J.D. Edwards, naku, ito yung ano, ito yung pinakaayaw namin before. Because of the flexibility, you can change of the users, pero less yung um, preset structure niya. Uh, ayaw na ayaw namin yan kasi parang ang old na nung system. Uh, I don't know, that's uh, that's already 2013. Uh, already seven years ago, I hope na sana nag-improve na yan. Okay, it also accepts module or bolt-on in various vendors. Pero, ayun, maganda siya, I mean, essence, pero uh, it's a no-no para sa akin na gumamit nun. Mas gusto ko pa rin si SAP. Okay. Oracle, ayan, nagamit ko rin yan. It is tailored on business focus, e-business focus, internet-based, ayan, yung sinasabi ko kanya sa inyo, internet-based siya. So, I will just search it in the World Wide Web tapos in code ko lang yung password ko sa ano then i could be able already to process my accounting uh, assignments no? instead of client uh, server based application na kinsal sa laptop etong oracle dapat ko just ko kahit weekend ako yung nagpo-process kasi i can uh, access it uh, outside of the uh, company you see website eto people stuff okay it's open modular architecture allows rapid integration of its system I have already used this. Um, somehow, maganda rin siya, pero again, I, um, I'm with SAP pa rin. And then, Baan, best of class application. Hindi ko pa nagamit yan, although nakita ko lang siya sa libro. But, okay. Ayan. So, another is NetSuite, although I can explain that to you next week. Okay? At saka iba pa mga ERP tools na nagamit ko. Alright? So, any question about this, guys? So, ayan. Thank you very much. Kung wala na kayong tanong. So, in the future, okay, sa audit naman kasi, I don't know if they do have this. They can see this because they have clients to uh, check on it. Pero yung talagang pinaka-process, no, I, I do not work in audit. Uh, ikwento ko sa inyo next week. no. But I have be able to use this application. Alright? So, I hope na may natutunan kayo for today's discussion. Okay, so, we have discussed about the enterprise resource planning system. Okay, so we are now down to our last chapter, so which is chapter 12 about the e-commerce. No? So please, uh, konting tiyaga na lang. And again, thank you for listening and have a great day.